In Russia they kill you because when you start on that path you become an enemy for life. Two years pass, four, ten. Sooner or later your enemies come for you dash Dmitri Godman tonight. We see the cruelty underlying what is euphemistically known in the underworld as the entertainment's industry. Travel hopping once more, we visit Cairo, but what follows there will not be scenic. A young woman, Lyudmila, a beauty therapist, has arrived to work in the city. She is met by two FAB young men who say they have been sent to take her to her hotel. We can see where this is going before Lyudmila does. It's only when she is in the back of the cab, afforded a brief glimpse of the pyramids, that she realizes the car is heading away from the town center. She is dropped off at some squalid industrial unit. These men will take you now, says the driver and to her horror she is bundled into the back of the windowless van by armed men, traffickers, along with other terrified female victims of a similar age. The convoy makes various stop-offs, in a stony gully in the Sinai Desert and then at an encampment, where one of the Bedouin traffickers emerges from a tent following a rape. The victim, seething, tearful, attempts a dash for freedom only to be caught, shot in both knees and left behind as the convey rooms off. They reach the Egypt-Israel border for yet another transfer. Finally, Lyudmila is presented to Cayman, who treats her with the sort of ostensible kindliness with which Jonathan Price excelled as High Sparrow in Game of Thrones. Does bereavement nourish or harden the heart? Back in the UK, Dimitri is driving the family out to Boris's house, to deal with estate agents. Alex gently suggests to his father that someone else drive. Looking on as the old man swigs from a plastic water bottle clearly brimful with vodka, Dimitri has enough of his wits about him to swerve off the motorway abruptly, having had his eye on a car he believes is tailing them. At the house, Alex disappears to the basement and finds a cache of surveillance photographs of Vadim. Vadim himself is in conference with Ilya. He believes that Boris had neither the brains or money to organize a hit on him. Ilya notes that some of Vadim's Russian rivals are feeling emboldened by the attack, one, Gromov, even named his dog after him. Later, Vadim will visit Gromov and take the dog from him as a gift. Then a montage, as we see Vadim at the grave of a departed loved one as Alex makes a pilgrimage to Boris's fresh grave. Does bereavement nourish or harden the heart? To Mumbai, where Cayman is negotiating with Dili Mahmood, a young would-be rival of Mr. Chopra, aka the city god. He offers him $500,000 a month to outbid Chopra in bribing local officials. Mahmood demurs and leaves the table but Cayman realizes this is mere haggling, this is the land of the no. Sure enough, Mahmood finds a pretext to return and accepts an improved offer. Back in London, one of Alex's co-workers at Godman's is looking over Cayman's file with some concern about potential conflicts of interest. Alex suggests Cayman isn't too problematic and casually mentions an investment idea of his that isn't suitable for the main fund. Out of sight of pesky ethical queries, he sets up a payment of 600,000 euros to Parminder Advisory Services, dispatched with a discreet mouse click to the Cayman Islands. This is at once dispersed by Dilly and his street cohorts around Mumbai, less discreetly, in brown paper envelopes. Later, premises are found for Mahmood affording him a bird's eye view of Chopra's day-to-day -day dealings. Cayman continues to work on Alex, persuading him on familial grounds. The best way to get to his uncle's killer is to destroy Vadim. He asks him to pose as his lawyer in Prague, where he is to meet a Mr. Resnick, who operates a business running counterfeit goods in a former tractor factory. Resnick, however, is a crashing bore, an offense to Cayman's professorial sensibilities first demanding 5 million euros to show Cayman is serious, then falling out with him in a restaurant. Get this old Jew out of my sight. He's also reluctant to take on the Russians in Prague. Fortunately, his frustrated deputy, ex-policeman Karl Benesch, Karl Roden, sees what his boss does not and, at the airport, Alex sees that Benesch sees it. He tells Benesch they can do business with him. This is Resnick's death warrant. His own henchmen drag across his apartment floor late at night and throw him to his doom. As Resnick falls involuntarily, we cut to London, where Dimitri has hurled himself off the roof of his own free will. It has been coming. The vodka and homesickness that were physically ruining him have been compounded by his brother's death, a reminder of his impotence. We now know that it was Vadim who ran him out of Russia, along with Cayman. The lives of his family were only spared at the suggestion of Ilya. But now his behavior is alienating his wife. After one heartbreaking call to Alex, and sensing that his continued existence is endangering his family, he jemmies his way onto the rooftop once more. He falls, but survives. He's even able to hold a conversation with Alex. What's wrong? He asks his son. Nothing, lies Alex. 
Additional notes Vadim now has a dog called Vadim. An intimidating gesture is an intimidating gesture but surely the confusion, along with the hound's habit of biting, must make the game not worth a candle? There's a lovely bit of sound mixing as the whimpers of trafficked women merge with the chortles around the table at Rebecca's dinner party. The loud music of which Dimitri's fellow residents are complaining includes status quo's whatever you want. Sympathetic as Dimitri is in this episode, you have to be with his neighbors on this one. First Vadim's survival, then Dimitri's, the message appears to be that Russians are made of durable stuff. Boris seems almost soft to have succumbed to a mere gashed throat. Sidney Bloom, ethical banker, turns out to have made his money just as ruthlessly as anyone. Rebecca's caring capitalism speech from episode 1 sounds even more hollow. What's the deal with Masha, Alex's ex, back on the scene? Is Alex Y conscious of the extent to which he is dancing with Devil? Are Chopra's days as God of Mumbai numbered? And will Dimitri succeed in his quest to top him?